Thank you for being here today. I'm Chancellor John Carey from the Ohio Department of Higher Education. We are here today to launch a statewide initiative that addresses an issue that is important to all of us. A single act of sexual violence on Ohio College campus is one too many. Ohio, under Governor John Casey's leadership, seeks to strengthen our state's ability to better respond to and ultimately prevent sexual assault on our college campuses. Through the state budget, the Ohio Department of Higher Education was charged with developing model best practices to respond to and prevent campus sexual assault, and $2 million was allocated to support this work. To gain a better understanding of the diverse needs of Ohio's colleges and universities, statewide input was received from presidents, campus and community experts, and advocacy groups, many of which are here today. A survey was distributed to all campuses, national trends and best practices are also researched. Many Ohio campuses have already implemented strategies to address sexual violence. The recommendations that will be online for you today are intended to strengthen that work. A special thank you to leadership provided by President Kathy Crindle from Otter Vine University, President Michelle Johnston from Otter Grand Community College and the University of Otter Grand, and President Michael Drake from The Ohio State University. Today you'll be hearing from President Johnston and President Trindle, as well as Dr. Javon Adams Gaston, Vice President for Student Life at Ohio State, who is here on behalf of President Drake. I would also like to thank all the others who collaborated on the development of the recommendations, including members of the Safer Campus Task Force, our campus associations, which include the Inter-University Council of Ohio, the Ohio Association of Community Colleges, in the Association of Independent Colleges and Universities in Ohio, the Implementation Advisory Group, the many community advocates, and campus Title IX coordinators. The result of this effort, Changing Campus Culture, is a collaborative approach that builds upon existing work underway on many campuses to ensure better outcomes for all Ohio colleges and universities. This work will be supported by the Ohio Department of Higher Education through a dedicated staff member. Our objective for the Changing Campus Culture Initiative is that 100% of Ohio's campuses adopt 100% of the recommendations by the beginning of the 2016-17 academic year. With that, I would like to introduce President Michelle Johnston from Rye Grant Community College and the University of Rye Grant, who will present the recommendations and strategies contained within this report. Thank you, Chancellor Perry. Good afternoon. I am Michelle Johnston. I'm the president of the University of Rio Grande and Rio Grande Community College. And it is my honor to be here today and to introduce the Changing Campus Culture Recommendations. I do, as a representative um, of two different types of colleges, a community college and a small private university, one a commuter campus and the other a residential campus. As we work on the changing campus culture report, it was clear that the recommendations address every type of campus. We learned that there is no one size fits all way to prevent and respond to sexual violence. Our campuses are very diverse and the recommendations address that diversity. Our objective for the Changing Campus Culture Initiative is that 100% of Ohio's campuses will adopt and implement 100% of the recommendations by the beginning of the 2016-17 academic year. We are looking for the leadership of our presidents to set the tone for safe and secure campuses. By working together, we have an opportunity to make headway on these challenging issues. The Changing Campus Culture Report includes five recommendations that are designed to work together. And as Chancellor Kerry mentioned, there, there will be support with this that will be provided to help campuses successfully adopt these recommendations. And I'd like to give you a brief overview of the recommendations. Recommendation one is use data to guide action. By the start of the 2016, 2017 academic year, 100% of Ohio's campuses will have conducted an annual campus climate survey and defined next steps based on those results. Some campuses have already implemented the survey and care will be taken to avoid any kind of duplication. However, the Department of Higher Education will collect some common data points that allow us to measure our progress as a state. 
When the Department of Higher Education conducted a preliminary survey, 70% of campus respondents indicated that a campus climate survey is very useful. However, only 27% are currently implementing this tool. One campus wrote, there is great value in having a common tool that can be linked to statewide training and education programs. The Ohio Department of Higher Education will disseminate a common climate survey to Ohio colleges and universities and provide other technical support as needed. Funds will be made available to assist campuses in analyzing data and planning next steps. Recommendation number two is empower staff, faculty, and campus law enforcement and students to prevent and respond to sexual violence through evidence-based training. The results of the campus climate survey and insight of the campus experts, including Title IX coordinators, should provide a window into which programs are best suited for a particular campus. Comprehensive training programs include bystander training, self-protection, protection, and trauma-informed training. From the survey, it was found that 33% of responding com com campuses are already implementing this recommendation. And one campus wrote, I think it's important to be able to select programs and adapt programs that serve a particular campus culture. The Ohio Department of Higher Education will support our campuses by coordinating bulk purchasing for campuses and contracting with a consultant to provide regional training programs. Recommendation number three is communicate a culture of shared respect and responsibility. So consistent messaging and reinforcing positive social standards and norms are critical for changing our campus cultures. One prominent national, national awareness program is the It's On Us campaign, which seeks to engage college students and members of the campus community. Our survey showed that nearly half of all campuses that responded have this recommendation in place, an additional 41% intend to implement the recommendation this academic year. One campus representative wrote, it is helpful to have evidence-based models and resources at low or no cost to campuses. Campuses that have not yet done so should engage their communication departments to launch an effective awareness campaign. A resource portal will be accessed through the Department of Higher Education website, it will be Ohio higher and it is being developed now, now. In addition to providing links to national campaigns, model policies and practices, best practices from across Ohio and our campuses soon will be available. Recommendation number four is to develop a comprehensive response protocol, a comprehensive protocol <coughs> developed by engaged stakeholders, that's students, staff, campus police, local domestic violence agencies, all of the above. And that will ensure that a more informed community, more consistent policies and procedures, and stronger community partnerships will exist. It will address the needs of survivors and protect the rights of the accused. The survey showed that 35% of campus respondents have not completed this to date. One campus wrote, it would be extremely difficult to craft a policy that fit the needs and structure of every institution statewide. A statewide contract with a consultant to help campuses craft policies individually will be a huge benefit. As a result, a consultant will engage with individual campuses to draft, review, and streamline existing response protocols. Examples of comprehensive response protocols will be available on the resource portal. The fifth recommendation is adopt a survivor-centered response. Survivors of sexual assault should feel that they are believed and trust that the system works for them. Campuses should identify responsible employees and confidential resources on and off campus to provide a response that is truly survivor-centered. A confidential advisor is a trained professional who works with survivors and who is not subject to mandatory reporting requirements unless or until the victim is ready. The advisor can answer questions, provide information, and navigate institutional and community options, as well as provide counseling. A victim advocate either works at the institution, a rape crisis center, or with domestic violence programs. A response guarantee establishes guidelines for that reporting process. Survey data showed that 58% of responding campuses have not implemented a survivor-centered response, and 33% said they would need longer than one year to do so. One campus said, 
at this time, we are finding it difficult to find resources in our counties to act as a victim advocate. So statewide training on developing and implementing 